What's up world, it's Rise in Ottawa, Canada. And uh, today I'm uh, just doing this little short intro from the backyard here so I can show you how the garden's been growing. Got lots of tomatoes coming along here. It's, uh, it's getting crazy back here. It's a beautiful blistering hot day in Ottawa. Uh, one of those beautiful days that we're gonna think back to in January and just be uh, so thankful that we have. Um, so you can see my kale over here just going nuts. And uh, just about to have Amelia Griffin over. Uh, she goes by Millie Rose. It's one of her aliases. And uh, she's an amazing contemporary dancer, uh, classically trained as well as a ballet dancer. And I know her as a club dancer as well. So, I mean, she definitely uh, is legit on the underground tip as well. And uh, she's had an amazing dance career. Uh, she's only around 30 now. Um, so she's just getting warmed up as a choreographer. And uh, she's... Uh, done a lot of work with uh, Propeller Dance, which is an amazing dance company that uh, works with da differently abled dancers. So uh, with wheelchairs and uh, with uh, crutches and um, really exploring, you know, and redefining what mobility is and what dance is. So um, she's an amazing dancer, amazing person. She's also a serious accomplished Ashtanga yogi and uh, teaches yoga as well. And so we'll talk about that and how she got into that. And um, so I hope you enjoy this. She's a beautiful person and uh, amazing dancer. And uh, so let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Gone Monk. Uh, my guest today is the amazing, lovely and talented Amelia Griffin. Uh, she goes by Millie Rose, you may know her as that. She's an amazing, accomplished dancer of multiple disciplines. So um, classically trained. Ballerina. Ballerina, a mo modern dancer, dancer, contemporary dancer. Yeah. And uh, also I know her as an underground you know, club dancer, which is sort of the, <laughs> the world that we connected to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're also an amazing yogi as well, and uh, Ashtanga yogi as well mm -hmm. as uh, Hatha yogi, and you teach as well. And you do some yoga therapy as well for some yeah. of your clients. Yeah. Um, so welcome to Gomak. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Nice. We've been trying you. to connect for a while, so... Yeah, I mean, you and I, we have many different instances where we've met in... So, I, so the first time I met you was the Canada Dance Festival. At uh, the NEC? Where yeah, I, and I was DJing level. upstairs on yeah. the... Yeah, that's it was right. a really good jam. <laughs> oh, that was that four or five years ago, something like that? Yeah, and yeah. Julia, Julia good sick, love friend. you, yeah. um, introduced us. That's right. Yeah. And then it's yeah. just been many iterations. Yeah, and through Quende okay. as well, who I know and through as well. Quende. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Long live time code. Yes, time code. <laughs> Classic Ottawa party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you also created music for my That's right. Yeah, we ended up uh, feelers. Yeah, we worked together last was it last year, last summer on that? Last <clears throat> fall, was it? It seems so I was trying to go back yeah. in my memory. I thought it was a year, two years. It was only last it's November. Just last it's just fall. so much has happened. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, art score there. And that was yeah. an interesting piece because you blended uh, the dance of Simon Classic, who goes by the name, or Simon uh, Xavier, who goes by the name Classic. Yeah. And uh, so he's a he's a straight up L.A. popper, like a really hardcore popper. He wears his name Classic very well, and he's one oh, of the yeah. guests that I have planned for the show as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, but you blended that with your world of of contemporary, and then on top of yeah. it, there was a very strong narrative in it where you were sort of really tackling a lot of gender issues right so gender-based yeah, issues gender-based issues and specifically to you know my lived experiences as mm -hmm. well it was very much about um street harassment and and my experiences with that but yeah. also how you know just the, the the sort of larger tropes of you know why does that happen mm -hmm. and how does um how do we navigate gender in this world and what is it you know permit or not permit and how does it shape the way we act or how does so a lot of a lo it was a really i see it more as like a research without necessarily a conclusion because mm -hmm. um, if you remember the last image was someone walking across and someone chasing them and then mm -hmm. they just went black so it's mm -hmm. like we acknowledge that that these issues are still still prevalent yeah but, um it feels really you know <sighs> I'm <laughs> really, really blessed mm -hmm. to be able to put something like that on stage and have yeah. it be celebrated. And I, you know, many thanks to, to Bronwyn Steinberg, who mm -hmm. uh, runs and curates the Tactics mm -hmm. series uh, that comes out of the Arts Court Theatre. Yeah. Um, and Dark Horse Dance Projects, which now I'm an associate director of, but that oh, was cool. one of the first iterations of that piece kind of got jump-started there. So 
it was really interesting yeah. to watch because I, I mean, I'm I'm always an advocate of, of art as a, a medium for social change, and you know, I just think it's even within pop art, you know, and let alone within yeah. what we call high art or whatever. But I think, you know, a lot of times, even DJs, I think we sell ourselves short of the power that we can have as agents for change, you know, and uh, Your shaping guides. society. That's what I think. Yeah, I think Your so guides. too. But I, I, know, I know it's a feedback loop, but it is. really you're guiding people towards what they're really, and you have to be, a, you know, an aware and sensing the environment. Yeah. I think it's a quite a deep... Uh, yeah. And then, yeah. so with that choreography, it's like I recognize that I was bringing up that conversation, mm -hmm. acknowledging something for myself, but coming back to classic and, and why he was in that, or why I, I, I've, I've seen him obviously out mm -hmm. <laughs> and about, and I'm always just drawn to the energy that he brings to his dance. Yeah. And, um, it's very much himself and it's very authentic. Yeah. Um, and I've always been a fan of um, different types of fusing street dance styles, urban dance styles, mm -hmm. with contemporary dance, like rubber band dance, mm -hmm. for instance, yeah. um, and, and, and how that's kind of been infusing into the world of contemporary dance, and mm -hmm. a lot of people are making those connections, yeah. and I, I really, I, th I think that both forms meet really beautifully in a place of, um, from an improvised space. Mm -hmm. Um, but also play with rhythms so interestingly together. Mm -hmm. So for me, with the, like really the beauty of that was starting off having classic in the room with you know some of the other contemporary dancers and yeah. then just putting on some music and giving them very basic tasks. It's like a cool like, class. And then they just you know and then and I still have footage of their improvisations and it just That's cool. Yeah, so it built into a beautiful piece. But I think there were the right energies. Um, with each other and, and you know we really had deep conversations about why we were doing that and yeah. what each each person in the in the process because there were three contemporary dancers um amber um, she's amazing too she's amazing. amazing dancer wow. yeah and she she you know i gave her a lot of text mm -hmm. too and that's terrifying for yeah. someone who's grown yeah. up dancing dancer, and not yeah. using the words so much mm -hmm. and she just she owned it wow did she ever it's yeah. an amazing piece. Is it online now? Can people watch it online? Or I'm going to be uh, releasing some of the clips. The clips. Uh, that's yeah. C. Thank you, C. Much mm -hmm. love. Um, filmed for it. Uh, but I just want to put it together in a way that's not like everything yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. you know, still is enticing. So it would be cool to watch the whole thing in one shot. Yeah. yeah. Really cool I think have it out there. I need help with video because I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> I know how to do like body movement stuff. But <laughs> technology. <laughs> Uh, Not so much. It's amazing. We have to embrace it. I'm forcing yeah. myself to embrace it, as you can see. <laughs> the ring. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. We got like a whole lot of you know, three camera set up with the mm, yeah. Uh, it's, good. it's amazing how much work it is to set stuff up for you know like we watch interviews and we watch things all the time, but when you start to delve into it, like it's a bit of work in the background to make oh, it happen. Oh my goodness! You know, so. I mean, and that so mm. let me like segue into something else. There mm. is like something that I work with and around and think about a lot is collaborations because you like for me in my world mm -hmm. in the theater I cannot put on a like it's next to impossible to do it and yourself. I don't have all yeah. the skills like you can't be up in anyway you need like a lighting doing the tech. lighting and uh, yeah. you need a sound tech <laughs> yeah, for sure. you need you know like you need a whole yeah, you need a team. stage manager mm -hmm. you need a whole team of people to be able to do that and even you know i was watching i was watching the the clips from that seated and i would still make lighting changes mm -hmm. but that's just because that's also part of highlighting and and giving a different perspective oh, to, sure. the, to the an experience of the Mm -hmm. uh, of the dance but I realized that I want to make those lighting changes because I'm seeing it from a video point of view mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that that is completely different than, than absorbing it, yeah. dance in a live performance mm -hmm. which is generally how I go about things so I wasn't mm -hmm. thinking about cameras when I was doing those lighting yeah, choices yeah, yeah. you know yeah I know there's so many different facets to it um, but to get back to the dance so you know it was really a clash between classic and these these three modern dancers mm -hmm. and uh, and then also amplifying that whole clash was the clash of the masculinity and femininity and in, the, in their throughout the dance and also through the dance form itself if you even really think about how rigid you know and how linear the you know the, the popping world is compared mm -hmm. to the modern dance right so mm -hmm. yeah it was a really interesting really interesting clash so and that was do you want to talk about like the experiences that led up to you uh, wanting to go down that narrative or like 
Oh, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I don't think it's a... Uh, sur it's not going to be a surprise to any of the ladies. Yeah, of course. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I hope that men are starting to realize that, oh, my gosh, this is happening. And, yeah. then, you know, that we, by airing these stories out, that mm -hmm. we actually, you know, come to a place of acknowledgement mm -hmm. so we can move forth with healing. Right? Yeah. And so me, part of my acknowledging is, is um, when I was 11, what... The, uh, this 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 older man, 24 years old. I was 11, and I don't um, obviously I don't know him anymore. But he was he was someone I trusted, mm -hmm. and he pushed me into a car and almost got on top of me. Mm. But his sister ran out of the house screaming and pulled him off me. Wow. I, I like it took me until I was like 20 to realize what that was. Wow. Um, so that was just sort of a weird thing that happened when I was younger that I couldn't quite process I didn't quite understand mm -hmm. and I felt like it was my fault that I had enticed him in some way mm. so that was a lot to deal with at that age and then at 14 I remember going to a festival and this is this is something that I really I hope continues to be explored and supported is young folks who are going to, to music festivals mm because it's instances like that where a lot of people are packed in that I've experienced. It could be a, a dangerous of, environment. Yeah. Right? So I got groped pretty, pretty full on mm -hmm. uh, at 14 and remember turning around. And this is like also, you know, to me, I remember it in movements, right? Mm -hmm. Like I remember it happening. I felt the feeling. And then I turned around and all the faces, none of them, it could have been anyone. It didn't make sense. Yeah. So I was like spinning, mm. you know, on the spot, not being able to make sense of what was happening. And, my boyfriend at the time was a bit in, in front of me and it was, I remember having a clear thought like, if that ever happens to me again, hmm. I need to do something about it. And then I used to have dreams from that point on of like turning around and punching someone, but only uh, like hmm. not having enough strength, just hmm. <laughs> being stopped by something. And then, but you know, also like. Just a day to day. Day to day, I walk on the street and, and there's, 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 you know, conversations or words or, mm. or, or sounds that are just, uh, and this is not Canada. Even a purpose I mean, of it. And, and, this, is, <laughs> and this is Canada. Like, imagine, you know, like we were in Cuba and mm. I mean, it, the amount of catcalling that was going on. And I was with Sarah and I mean, oh, yeah. the amount that was going on. And then when we got back here, we remember the first day back and we're walking down the street and men are not catcalling her and we're like, what's happening mm. like what what happened you know it was mm. just we were so used to it after I a few weeks of it super you know? uncomfortable in in italy at one oh italy's crazy it like super full on and <laughs> it's literally full on there yeah i mean and what's interesting like i'm from britain right yeah. and usually in britain like the women are like why they will hit you right oh, back yeah. with some sassy something or other so mm. You know, it's it's interesting to navigate like do you respond to that do you yeah. just keep going usually i just you know, that was all about you. That yeah. has nothing to do with me. Yeah. I just need to keep it moving, you know? Yeah. Um, it's amazing because I mean, and then, us, you I know, mean, but I don't not absorb it, but I need to put it out somewhere and I don't mm -hmm. want to put it violently back mm -hmm. out to someone. It feeds maybe. this like negative cycle and it just like mm -hmm. amplifies it even more. So there's some instances where you can call someone out and it seems appropriate mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you know that you're not going to be harmed. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing too is, 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 how, how much are you safe out in the world? Mm. You know, and I, this part of the part of the text from the the feelers piece was, mm -hmm. um, you know, as soon as I step out of the door, I'm hyper aware of like who's around and who might, you know, say something or who mm -hmm. might try to get too close to me or mm -hmm. what have you. Um, yeah, so you know, just just to say that that I appreciate very deeply being an artist in in um, in and around subjects like this yeah. and experiences like this wherein I, st I have somewhere to put it and yeah. I have somewhere to filter it and I, I think it's important that everyone has some way of um, navigating and but navigating isn't really the word I mean um, just working through yeah and expressing it in a constructive way where you're like creating something out of it and and by doing that you mm -hmm. also create space for other people mm -hmm. to feel acknowledged and that they're not alone yeah. and that you can talk about it and that you I mean it's it not something community. that I think a lot about but I gotta say I'm much more aware of it since doing the piece right 
like you've educated <laughs> me in a way in yeah. terms of that because it's classic said just the same something thing. that He's I like, just never really thought about yeah. even though I've been in a car with guys you know where guys will like you know d d uh, roll down the window and like holler something stupid yeah. at girls you know so what it's do you like, say though it's like you're a fucking idiot thank <laughs> you, you <know>? like, <laughs> they're also yeah. friends so i mean it's it's yeah. awkward too as it's it's hard as a man to step up and say that but i'm always like yo dude what the fuck are you doing you know like i think anyone who has a sister or mother who they, you know like you, you have to really get everyone comes from know, a mother well yeah we can't forget yeah. this yeah you know i mean some don't go know back them, and listen but to some yeah. tupac and we'll be okay <laughs> like, i don't know there's a lot of tupac i wouldn't listen to <laughs> about, about supporting women <laughs> maybe some lyrics in yeah, some yeah. Tupac tracks yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah like hip hop's a whole other arena for that because I mean it's such a loaded topic if you start talking about the actual content and stuff I'm sure you've talked about it with Quende and he, yeah. I'm sure he has some serious yeah. opinions about it yeah um, I mean I think at the end of the day that's art reflecting life too mm -hmm. you know um, yeah. and in art you go to hyperbolic places mm -hmm. Now it may be reflective of you know how you I don't know I'm not a hip hop aficionado mm -hmm. I, I love hip hop mm -hmm. and I really mm -hmm. respect uh, um, the growth and the and the roots and and you know how it's how it's all developing and really infusing into our everyday mm -hmm. uh, I think that's necessary yeah um, but in terms of in terms of lyrical content you know you know yeah. I'm a very like boop awake yeah. uh, uh woman in, in terms of of knowing knowing what being a woman in this world means mm -hmm. and so i choose to you know i, I choose the music that i listen to Pff, and if i hear a, a lyric that doesn't jive with me then yeah. that's part of the song and oh, so no, it, it doesn't is, resonate yeah. and so i'm no not i gonna, can't i can't even put play it <laughs> like as a dj i can't play music where i can't stand behind it 100 percent. like it's yeah. just yeah i'm just like yeah you know yeah. and that's part of the reason not to filter everything back through to feelers, but we just got to air some things out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but why I, I really wanted to invite you in, because I know that you would uh, respect the energy behind the project mm -hmm. and really be able to create music that was specific to that. And I think we went mm -hmm. in a really yeah, awesome Yeah, it was bang direction. on. Like, I think it worked really well. It was a really yeah. fun, uh, yeah. it was a really cool project. And part of, so like, yeah, just re referring back to these, these other things that we've been saying was some... Um, it was interesting to have classic in the room, not just from a movement perspective, mm -hmm. because, yeah, because that was super beautiful, um, but also just having a male in the room mm -hmm. and having him also wake up to how he's been um, gender boxed yes, yeah. in, um, and how the male experiences. You know, you're not allowed to cry, oh, yeah. and you know, you got to toughen up, and you always mm -hmm. got to like you know show up yeah. and, and and maybe not show your emotions as much and like that's very devastating oh like, it is there's no doubt you about know? it yeah. um and just just it uh, you end up having a society of you know emotionally illiterate folks yeah who do things from that place mm -hmm. because they're not in touch with the deeper levels of themselves yeah it's a self-perpetuating cycle it's not like i don't yeah. think that you know those men who say those things that they're not capable of operating from a a deeper and a higher self they are yeah. it's just they haven't been woken up to that they haven't been told they haven't been aware yeah. they're not around it it's you know it's all education and subconscious also from the stuff they yeah. get from media from role models around them you know and i think that's really important mm. like for me anyway navigating this space of sexual violence and and mm. being open about it and talking about it it's not about you know man versus woman yeah. so much not about that because we're all mm -hmm. hurting mm -hmm. you know if yeah. someone as a woman hurts on the street everyone's hurting mm. and we're all a community and we're all a collective mm. energy i think mm -hmm. while <laughs> you're a yogi <laughs> so yeah exactly so yeah. so it um i think we just all need to observe where that's coming from mm -hmm. and start to disengage the things that are harmful and mm -hmm. really make choices that, that that elevate each other and bring each other together because amen. you can't have the yin without the yang you can't yeah. you know we can't be hitting on each other amen <laughs> man yeah what does quade say get your weight up not your hate up mm. yeah word that's well said oh, yeah absolutely you know? So, okay, so we talked a lot about the piece that you just finished up last fall. Yeah. Um, I was talking to you a couple months ago, and you were in Perth, Australia. You were performing oh, yeah. for a... Yeah. So, <laughs> tell, tell me about that experience. With, uh, oh, that was, that was good. Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm blushing and a little bit shy <laughs> and giggly because I, I just feel so lucky to have this gig. Like it's, um, it's one of the many blessings in my life, but. So tell us um, about it. What does it involve? Yeah. What do so you do? it's, it's my, it's my work with this, um, locally based, um, theater company called Platypus Theater. Okay. Um, Platypus Theater is a, um, theater company that puts on puts on shows alongside symphony orchestras essentially well essentially with the goal to um, have musical education for young people okay and so how it functions is symphony orchestras always you know as they're planning their season they have their youth series or their children's series or their family series however they want to word it okay they have their regular series and they you know they're booking events throughout the year and so Platypus Theater will send them a bunch of shows, mm -hmm. uh, orchestras that they have some kind of connection to, and they'll book them in. So, you know, I've gone just to say that it's an amazing gig because I don't know where I'm going to go every year. Mm. Like, I was just in Perth, and then in in December of this year, I'm going to Macau. Wow. <laughs> so, <Maybe. laughs> excuse me. Um, but it's a gig that uh, brings so much joy into my life because usually you're in a... Um, you're in a, a symphony hall. It's usually about you know two thousand five hundred seats. Wow. These shows sell out, which fills my heart. Amazing. So much joy. Um, the symphony orchestra is on stage with us, yeah. and so that experience in and of itself, Powerful. just dancing and acting in the same space with th those like incredible musicians. Amazing. You know the sound surrounds you and the feedback. Like you, wow. you have to like two thousand five maybe. You know, they've all brought their parents, right? Yeah. Or their grandparents. So there's an enormous amount of children in the audience. Wow. And they're pure. You know, yeah, they will tell connecting. you if they like it. Yeah. They will tell you if they don't. They, they'll scream if they see his color. They're like, you know, all of it. And wow. so it's, it's, it's this really, you're kind of between this, this beautiful music, really supporting the dance and really teaching the, the young ones. And the young ones being like, yeah! Amazing. <laughs> um, so engaging through stories that are, that are fun for kids yeah. too. Like we do one that's Peter and the Wolf. Uh -huh. um, so I get to play the wolf that's and cool. a duck <laughs> and a bird <laughs> and a cat. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and then the other one, I play a monster who's taken music away from the word. He's a really big jerk. Um, and I come back as a bird, uh, sorry, an insect called Rhythm. Okay. And I help rebuild Rhythm for the world so cool. with the percussion section. I come back as the melody bird that's so with cool. big wings, you know, and I do like, that's more of a, like a ballet dance. Um, Amazing. And that's with the, the string section of the orchestra. So the kids get mm. to learn like what part of the orchestra, what instruments make what cool. sounds and what connections. So it's a deeper learning because they're having an experience mm -hmm. and they're, you know, being entertained. That's really know? the way to learn, man. Yeah. That's the way to teach. And the, yeah. so, you know, I was mentioning earlier, I have these, these yeah, the mics. mics on a lot. Mm -hmm. um, that's for the monster guy. Oh, yeah. So yeah, because he's funny. He has to roar, though, and that sometimes <laughs> makes kids cry. Aww. Which, you know, I have a big mask on, right? <laughs> yeah, so my scary. face is like, no, oh, don't cry. <laughs> but also, yes, I did my job. <laughs> You're very you're supposed good to monster. be very scary. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, that's yeah, cool. so I was in Perth doing the, the Peter and the Wolf one. Cool. Um, and that's, you know, I think when I was a little girl growing up all of this i wanted to travel the world dancing and mm -hmm. now you're it's, doing it. it's it's pinch me feelings to it's amazing to be doing that yeah you know and i realize i'm 29 yeah and all of my dance dreams have come true that's amazing so it's like oh that's oh, amazing yeah <laughs> <laughs> Pick some more dreams, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Cooking up a lot these days. That's amazing. Yeah, and 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 a lot of projects will, will, um, you know, come on to next ones. Like the feelers mm -hmm. one, opened up a whole, you know, advocacy, I guess, sort of side of myself mm -hmm. or you know, acknowledgement, and that's turned into being hired as a, choreogra a choreographer for the Gomeshi Effect, mm -hmm. which is coming out this um, January. Um, so yeah, it's just how do you build, right? Mm -hmm. um, from the platypus theater thing, I've, 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 um, yeah, got into more of the physical theater, dance theater side of myself that I really, 
resonate with a lot. And, yes. You know, Feelers was a dance theater piece, and I really, um, I really invite uh, the use of words mm -hmm. as well as the nonverbal. Yeah, I mean capacities. that's the most powerful, right? When you combine the both. Yes. Can I just say? It's great to be doing this in your in, in your beautiful home because you hear the pitter patter of little people feet. <laughs> Hopefully upstairs. they don't hear it too much through the mics. But yes, there's a lot of pitter patter. If you hear going pitter patter, on. it's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joy. It's good. <laughs> Um, um, so yeah, speaking so of being that. little and dancing, yeah. um, so you started very young. You started dancing very young. So tell me about your your journey into dance. Well, my journey into dance, I um, I think I really started dancing where my br my dad used to work nights. Okay, and my brother had gone to school, and my mom was out of work. And he used to put, so my childhood, if I remember in records, <laughs> is Bill Withers, hmm. Jimi Hendrix, Bob Marley, Buffy St. Marie, cool. maybe the Rhythmics. So my dad used to, he, he has an enormous record collection mm. and he's, he used to work at Sound the Record Man okay. in the 70s in wow. Toronto, yeah. Wow. Um, and 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 was into records in the UK too. So so yeah, this is. Yeah, but you were born in the UK. I was born in Leicester. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and in the East, East Midlands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you came here. You and then I came here when I was eight. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ninety four. But um, yeah, so when I was little, in the afternoons, my dad would just put on records, and we'd just jam. Cool. And dance so party. I think that, like, yeah, dance parties with the dad mm. were uh, and are, <laughs> you know, the base of everything. That's cool, man. <laughs> um, and then my mom kind of, you know, my mom's a feminist, so she wanted to put me in football, soccer. Um, okay. And she wanted to put my dad and my brother in dance or, you know, cool. just kind of Blend switch it up, it up yeah. a little bit, you know. Um, but one of our our closest family friends their daughter Katie um, was going to dance and kind of didn't really feel comfortable without a buddy okay now we were like three years old oh so. yeah, this is really young over there yeah. over there so I went to dance with her and I loved it okay yeah ballet? Um, in 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 ballet okay. yeah cool. you know creative movement okay I remember we used to do uh, <laughs> we used to do um, liaisons and sautés okay. as mind me up so you would jump and you go mind me happy <laughs> mind me happy and then mind me sad mm -hmm. and mind me sad to do like a plie or something so you know already the That's words cool. were in dance theater already <laughs> wow three four um, years old three four years old so wow. that was just and i just kept doing it because yeah. i just liked it mm -hmm. you know and my friends did it and in england it was um i went through karen milner of dance okay which was in you know a church and and very community orientated uh we did ballet we did disco dancing okay <laughs> and uh which i think here you would normally call jazz oh, okay but it was they called it disco disco dancing wow. yeah yeah um i have disco dancing medals nice <laughs> <laughs> you deserve those yeah i do <laughs> i've seen you get down <laughs> um and what else do we do tap yeah cool so that was that was wonderful you know it was very low-key and it mm -hmm. was it was you know uh, and you kept that going until you were well that your parents kept sending you there until you were nine ten till til we til so so when we moved here you know that was one of the things that they were like okay we've got to keep this consistency yeah. for amelia and keep her dancing um so you found another place here to train yeah you know the school of, uh the school of dance that's where i went later yeah. um studio de danse danielle no i don't know in that. elmer no okay. funny little tidbit <coughs> Mr. Simon Classic Xavier also went there as a did child. Did he do jazz or what? Um, I don't know what he did. You okay. have to ask him. They might have had like a hip-hop program or something. No. Huh? No. It was traditional. They had, well, they had like some, they had hip-hop. Uh, no, that's, that's not true. They did have hip-hop uh, teachers. But I'm not sure at his age what he was actually yeah. doing. But uh, I danced okay. with his sisters in wow. pieces. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, we really kind of, we figured that out when we were working together. <laughs> we're like, oh! Oh my God. <laughs> um, so yeah, we moved to Aylmer, um, so that was the nearest studio. Okay, and cool. in that studio, I also joined their um, their competitive team. Mm -hmm. um, so we did we did hip hop, whatever you know, Choreo. music video dancing yeah. kind of style. Mm -hmm. um, 
um, we did ballet, we did lyrical, again, that's its own sort of thing, uh, tap and jazz and modern. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we competed, uh, you know, we had, we had shows here, but we had, we competed in different competitions across the Canada and the States. And cool. Yeah. So it was all coming from you at that point. Like there wasn't your parents pushing you into it or anything. It was all, you just no, wanted to dance. No, yeah, no, it was a real, I, I've always loved dancing. And yeah. I think what makes me always like w want to go further is there's, and you were, you were talking about this in your last gun, Mike, but I fun. really like connected with it is that, you know, you're a collector mm -hmm. and you, yeah, collecting you moves build, and modalities. Yeah, yeah. And your body is a, is a, is a, is a memory machine. It's amazing. Yeah? You know? And so the more you compile and you just have, you know, all these different files of dance it's inside amazing. your body. You know, we used to yeah. do swing dancing. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done Irish, um, classical dancing on the, you know, like river dance. You mentioned maple dancing too, which is yeah. a really interesting thing as well, right? So maple dancing is, you know, super it's a folk British. Dance, right? a yeah. British, British folk dance. Yeah, so we Germanic have that. roots. Does it have from, Germanic roots? Comes from pagan rituals. Well, you know, that's Phallic my people. in the middle and yeah. then uh, the wrapping of a womb around uh, that's how know. we get down. You <laughs> that's know? how you. That's how you roll. The nature things, <laughs> just the nature things, very basic nature things. Yeah, look at maple dancing. It's pretty interesting. I mean, yeah. So like my maple, da I always hold it in my heart because it was uh, one of my happiest memories in school. Is you know in gym class, get the pole up, everyone grabs a rhythm, and cool. you just you weave. Really you, cool. you know you're skipping but you're weaving with your spatial awareness though and like i mean in, moving in your body out, through tight out, spaces or like in and out and in and out it's like parkour but you know it's pretty cool yeah you've it's really <laughs> yeah i've been i've been training parkour i know really i wanted to talk to you about this because yeah. that appeals so much Yo. to the to the bike messenger side Yo. of myself and the and dancer too like to me dancer, it's like a dance the with the environment it's amazing absolutely it's just but the, taking it to an urban place yeah it's so ah. wonderful and it's so the other amazing thing about parkour too is that all your dance that you've done will feed into that all yeah. your body awareness all the yeah. yoga you've done yeah any athletics you've done it all feeds into yeah. this thing and it just becomes this oh I'm obsessed with it. I'm, I'm completely obsessed. I can tell <laughs> you and so Devin fun. are very... Devin's, we've Devin been training Justin. hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Devin's my great. boy. Yeah. So, anyway, and I think sorry. that's... So we're all, I don't know, it's all good, you yeah. know. Or maple dancing. Just like, very cool. Well, that's, you know, that's... Uh, uh, I guess just, just part of my culture. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what you do when you're in school. When yeah. you're <laughs> from England. It's amazing. Um... And I really, you know, I know in the back of my mind one day when I make a piece about me <laughs> and my ancestry and who I am and, mm -hmm. and, you know, all the composites of me, I know that maples are going to be in there. That's cool. But that hasn't happened yet. I'm not, you know, that piece is building. <laughs> Take your time. Um, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's a deep and heavy, so I can't rush it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, England, dancing. That cool. was that. And so you came here, you did all your high school years, you were still doing the dance, and then you so, went yeah, into... So, yeah, so I went to... So after the, the studio de Danse Danielle, I think I was 13, I quit the competition dancing. And okay. actually, you were talking about parents. I wanted to quit dance. Really? I was so done, and um, <laughs> my parents said, well, maybe it's the place, mm -hmm. and maybe it's... Not that there's anything wrong with Studio de Danse Danielle, but maybe mm -hmm. I wasn't getting fulfilled from what they were yeah. offering. Um, you know, maybe it's the style of dance or the way it's being presented. So mm. I was like, okay. Obviously, your parents game. really believe in this too. My I parents mean, are. Not, uh, I mean, my parents were into contemporary dance before I was born. Yeah. Like, they love dancing. They really have a, a lot of respect for artists. My mom's a poet, mm -hmm. um, a published poet. So she, uh, you know, she has that side of herself, but she's also a mega scientist. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's a very 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 intelligent woman um, and my dad uh, is a is a social worker mm. and so I think those things have really influenced yeah, me. Yeah you brought all of that into you. Yeah That's for sure. Amazing. Um, but yeah so they, they they said well why don't you try out the School of Dance's professional ballet training program give that a whirl see how that goes and I loved it. Mm. I just really needed like not so much like the you know the sh the show mm. of it like I was that is fulfilling for me, but I really was was craving the technique and the digging into, you know every day showing up and working the same moves and really 
mm. um, developing um, more from an, a technique and training point of view, awesome. and less so from a from a showing mm -hmm. point of view. Which you know, again, both are totally valid. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I loved that. I love ballet. I still love ballet. I just awesome. don't want to do it on a stage mm. <laughs> as much. Um, yeah. Um, and then after that, after I graduated high school at 16 um, and the professional ballet training program, I kind of, I'm a, you know, I'm a very people oriented person mm -hmm. and I wanted to help people. Um, and I told my parents, okay, you know, like, I think that's it for me for dance. Like really? I, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to go into university for psychology. Um, so I could become a psychologist and, and help people in that way. Mm. And they really questioned, they really like sat me down and questioned like what do I really mean by that? Mm. And how does art not heal people? Oh, and how, yeah. And so it got to the point where, again, they're the people that suggested, well, why don't you try the contemporary dance mm. school? I said, you know what, guys, <laughs> you're right. Wow. They said, we just don't feel like it seems like you're done with it yet. Yeah. Um, and I'll be forever grateful for no, that's it because they never man. pushed me. They just like were really like you should really consider this. Wow. Um, because that just just that that program, the School of Dance, is, is so close to my heart because they really develop artists. Wow. And their programs are are, are very <sighs> yeah, just just ripe for learning and this you know, positive environment and so much what I needed so I graduated with with you know kind of two you know, ballet and contemporary dance at mm -hmm. 19 well wow. so that was that's when most people are graduating like you know high school or first year out of high school and so I felt really blessed and then I essentially had it you know in 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 my world of dance I had everything I needed awesome so then you moved to Montreal then I moved to Montreal mm -hmm. yeah and and got injured <laughs> yeah so you were dancing professionally yeah so my first my first or? gig was um was with um choreographer Sabina Mita. Okay. And she was presenting her master's thesis, which um actually is not so far from what I'm doing now, but um uh, she had 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 this residency in New York with these women um who had escaped um um domestic violence situations but who were also um women from another country so you know some sort of immigration from from another place um yeah and she had worked with them through movement as a mode for healing and you know finding her own power again and um so that she turned that into her masters and uh, i was one of the dancers to to cool. embody those movements for those women cool uh, it was very cool. Very cool first gig to do. Nice mm -hmm. to have the first gig in Montreal. You yeah. Know? Um, I got hired by what's now Taradou's Dance, but wasn't founded yet. Mm -hmm. um, that artistic director, Annick Bouvret, mm -hmm. who I actually worked with in school. And we just got along really well. So she, she wanted to hire me uh, for a piece. So Souffle qui m'habite. Okay. And that one was, she had a, a video of her baby daughter who it was kind of the first time she was figuring out how to crawl. Interesting. And so I learned like movement for movement, her whole like, cool. you know, like m initiation of movement. In That's amazing. Yeah. And then we just kind of danced it up a little bit. Okay. Um, and that sparked, like I'm still work for Tarot Dance. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was 2006. 2005, 2006. So that's, you know, 10 years of working together. So a lot of the things that came right away were also the things that, I've, I've carried with me for a long time, Dors en Danse, which uh, most recently is, it's Sylvie de Rosier who also runs the School of Dance Contemporary Program. Mm. Um, she just presented in at the Canada Dance Festival and um, out in Vancouver as well, okay. but she gave me a lot of opportunities over the years um, in and around this area. Cool. Uh, yeah, and I, I danced for both of them. Ugh, you were one of you. <laughs> I danced for both of them for their inaugural performance for both of their companies. Okay. And in the dress rehearsal for that, and that like, it, you know, these are half hour long pieces. These are really, you know, hefty pieces of work. Um, and I busted my knee in the dress rehearsal. Uh. I was doing a little roll and my knee cap went this oh. way and these guys went this way and back went. ACL. 
Um, no, Papalidius. In charge of just that last little bit of movement. Okay. Um, so, and that comes from, from too much hyperextension for me, for my body within the structure of ballet. Okay. So there's a lot of unlearning of things that aren't healthy for my body mm. that I've had to do from the different styles of dance that I've done mm. and continually edit and choose the movements that really support. Um, and I think everyone should, any dancer really needs to be aware of that. Big time. You know, you can want to do a lot of things, but if it doesn't mm. work with your body, you know and we're all naturally just push i don't think i've ever met a dancer that didn't have some serious injuries to work through you know myself yeah. included you know it's yeah. like it's just par, par for the course in a way you know? but it's it, it, if you're gonna dance you have to know you're gonna get injured yeah no you are and you, Anything know, you minimize physical, really. that yeah you minimize that mm. by you know training your whole body mm -hmm. to to you know all muscles the whole fascial structure you mm -hmm. know equally supporting each part and mm. if you have that equal support support throughout your body you're less likely mm -hmm. but you may land w wrong one day yeah you know no, like it's <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. and i think part of navigating injuries is also bringing out different parts of yourself like through injuries i've i was very lucky that that people still wanted to work for, with me mm -hmm. and navigate around this injury um, so I had, you know, my knee injury, I had on the bottom of my feet, um, in the ball of my foot, um, and a trap nerve for a long time. So I couldn't mm. really walk. And wow. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> just, you know, one thing after another, after another, after another, yeah. and it was just, you know, restructuring and breaking down. And that's I when you got into yoga pretty seriously as well, right? That's, that's, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was working at Lululemon. Mm -hmm. And so I had, you know, this job that was very much about, uh, you know, um, being aware of what's happening in yoga in mm -hmm. the city and we got free classes and that, that saved me. That was really, 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 really helpful because it cool. gave me income. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it gave me, you know, healing, but it also gave me exploration. I could go and try lots of different types of yoga and mm -hmm. see really what resonated with me. That's but true. back when I was uh, 16 and started the ballet program, we had yoga classes. Mm -hmm. And Janice, who we had to come in to teach us from a young age, that's the studio I still work at. Mm. So I guess I like oh. building long-term relationships. That's great, man. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, you know, and sh she's Ashtanga, Ashtanga Yoga, so eventually come, came back full circle. I was like, no, Ashtanga is really you know, what I love, what I need, what's the, like the thing for me. So awesome. I did my teacher training with, um, and a Mysore program with um, Mark Darby, Mark and Joanne Darby okay. and Shankara, out of Sattva Yoga Shala in Montreal. Okay. I don't know them. Big and heavies. <laughs> yeah, look up Mark and Joanne Darby. Okay. Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> One of these, like, you know, older couples who've been going to, to, to India to learn from the source for many, yeah, many years, decades. Cool. Um, yeah, so that was, that got my whole body working together again, you know? Awesome. And then after that, after teaching for a while in Ashtanga Yoga for cl in a class structure, I realized the people that were coming to me with injury-based questions or some sort of imbalance, be it, you know, mind, body... Um, or even on the emotional scale, um, that I didn't, I had some answers mm -hmm. because of the, you know, being a dancer and being someone who works with their body, I didn't really feel knowledgeable enough to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. And I, I realized mm -hmm. that people were asking me that and I was also wanting that as well. So that, that's what led me more towards the yoga therapy, mm -hmm. yoga therapeutics training. Um, and so I'm really grateful now because I can see people one-on-one -on -one to fix a certain thing that they really want to get into mm -hmm. or, you know, rebalance um, and or can teach a group of folks, you know, through this methodology. So Very cool. Um, yeah, and, 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 you know, injuries, they, they're necessary because <laughs> yeah. they wake you up to um, what you think is going on mm -hmm. <laughs> and... It brings you back to your vulnerability, mm -hmm. which is extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it tones down the ego a little bit. Big time. Yeah. And so that's ego built of what you think you know, and then you're, you know, brought to a different space, and it's like, okay, well, I can't do these things anymore, but what now can I do? Mm -hmm. And so I like to 
see injuries as opportunities for more growth mm -hmm. and you know staying Thank humble and, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and really uh, uh, they're devastating but mm -hmm. but they're also very helpful tools mm -hmm. that can emerge from injuries yeah. so I mean in terms of the the yoga journey that you've been on and you're talking mm -hmm. about the ego and you you know you've mentioned you know the community around you and how you feel one with all these people around you I mean it sounds very much like it's been this spiritual journey for you where the yoga is just another side of the the movement but really they mm -hmm. have some very similar um, you know some similar components and to me I always think about you know the Nataraj the, the statue mm -hmm. of Sh Lord Shiva doing yeah. the dance you know and it's like this, this destruction of the ego you know to me the dance is like the ultimate art for that and and it's a really spiritual journey that the dancers on that was kind of the impetus for a lot of this stuff was mm. um you know some of these conversations i would have with dancers and with, with musicians as well where you really realize that there's a lot more going on than them just moving or making sound you know like it's this really deep ancestral journey of the artist you know mm. so how, how do you see that in terms of the yoga versus dance well, I'll take it back to what you first said in, in terms of spiritual journey, and I, I, I would argue that this whole thing that we're doing here is a spiritual <laughs> journey. <laughs> Just, you know, life is spirit, yeah. you know. Um, uh, I appreciate that you, that you brought Shiva into the conversation because I think that we underestimate um, how much we need to continually strip away and rebuild and you know really that's more of the 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 shiva brahma and vishnu sort of you know, triad and and, mm -hmm. and um um you know birth life death regeneration then just this continuous cycles and so i see i see the world very much you know the, the things that i believe in change um <coughs> I believe in cycles and I believe in vibrations. Hmm. Um, and so when you're when you're moving the spirit um, through these molecules <laughs> and it comes out as dance or yoga, um, I really feel that the more you the more I do that anyway, because I can really only speak from one I know. Um, it's it's always just bringing yourself back to the awareness of the moment, mm -hmm. and I, I I I won't be able to to quote it exactly, but Crystal Pipe, um, one of my favorite choreographers and a Canadian choreographer, we should be very proud to have her in our roster, um, said something to the effect of, um, you know, dances, and I kind of saying the same thing about yoga, but it's an ethereal thing, mm. and the movements. They don't exist anywhere but in the body. Mm -hmm. You know, like with visual arts, you have like something a thing, tangible. Like yeah. there it is. But movements are, are being created or melting away or being created or melting away, and it's just this constant um, uh, regeneration or this constant flow. And this, um, if you're not with yourself in that moment, um, you you know you're you're less able to move it forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I guess maybe it, it comes that bottles down more into the the meditative quality of both forms mm -hmm. of dance and of yoga, uh, and that's a really awareness of the moment, um, and not being distracted by, you know, monkey mind. Oh not my being god! Being distracted yeah. by by the mind that wants to pull us in. A, you know, that is a beautiful part of ourselves that can bring lots of thoughts and imagination and creation. Mm. Um, you know, and your and your heart, and all the things you've lived, and your memories, and your feelings, and your all of that lives inside of you. So these, you know, these 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 stories and these percolations are are, are going. But I find the beautiful part that you can get to is when you're just sailing through mm -hmm. all of this movement, you know, and all of this change and all of this vibration. Um, I hope I'm making sense. No, that's deep, man. That's. Yeah, and like like you know that feeling when you're just you yeah. feel pure. You just you you you're you're, yeah. you're not even aware that you're dancing. You're not even aware that you're you know doing yoga, mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> you're like a you cork on water. You're just responding perfectly to the environment. You know. You you tap into to the spirit of everything. Mm -hmm. 
you know you you I, for me that's that's the most powerful places because um it's not like your will is moving you mm -hmm. or an external force is moving you your will and external forces the around you are all just you know moving together so you're a part of the air around you yeah. there's no negative s negative space and positive space it's mm -hmm. all together yeah um, and it's really hard to describe with words, yeah. you know, uh, and I know this is what this interview is about, but putting that into words is a very, um, a very sensitive thing because I think it also is, is different for everyone, mm. but you, as you move, you're processing, as you move, you're stripping away, as mm -hmm. you move, you're building. And so it speaks to very much just how I feel about every moment. Yeah. Every moment will never ever be the same again. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we're in constant change and vibration. Yeah. So um, I think it's just my way of tapping into the reality of that and mm -hmm. really bringing myself back to um, just the energies that, that, that go through us and that yeah, are all the around truth, us. the essence. Like the I mean, I was, yeah. again, super blessed with the parents that I have. My dad, when I was. 15 years old have you heard of Carlos Castaneda mm -hmm. you just you gave me all that those books <laughs> yeah he's like just so you know it's not about the drugs <laughs> oh, by the way <laughs> he's like this is this guy's way in because he couldn't break his mind but like read these books <laughs> you can do without the drugs too it's just uh, yeah 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 exactly he's like it's not just keep reading <laughs> he's like don't listen to Carlos listen to Don Juan <laughs> so well, I think yeah. that also like just woke me up to mm -hmm. a very spiritual path and mm -hmm. everything that I do needs to feed mm -hmm. into that and build, you know, not even positivity. It just, I just need to be with what's happening the oneness, because the world yeah. is chaos, mm -hmm. you know, and I, if I expect it's going to go any other kind of way, yeah. to me, I've lost my sense of, of what's real. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's being okay with that chaos as it moves and it's like, it's all just movement you know sometimes is, that movement yeah. harms you sometimes that movement fulfills you and you mm. just got to keep it moving well yeah you know that's deep man so one question that popped up for me when you're you were talking there is like you're chasing this elusive state that we're describing <laughs> and but part of you is <laughs> chasing, chasing it or chasing your 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 i mean you, there are things taking you away from it and you're striving to be one with it right would that be fair to say sure okay yeah so now yeah, part of you has to do that on stage in front of 2500 screaming kids oh that's so and much then, easier oh really yeah oh and then the other part of you like let's say you're in a nightclub like you've come out to dance to my sets i love yeah. when you come out by the way yeah and you know so i'm watching you there and you're you're also doing that same thing you're you're like um you're also pursuing this the dance in a state mm -hmm. you know i i feel like i am all the time and and you know that's something i've talked about with lots of other dancers is that sometimes the conditions are right your mind state is right and you can access that mm -hmm. that oneness that bliss whatever you want to call it you can access it more easily and then other times there's a lot that's pulling at you you yeah. know it could be the monkey mind it could be situations around you conflict around you whatever yeah. it is that's taking you away from it right so how is it for you when you're getting paid to do it how is it for you when you're you're paying to go to a club to see a musician mm. or a DJ that you really love? What's the difference? Is there a difference? Is it the same thing? Hmm. Um, obviously, I've um, put in an enormous amount of work. Yeah. So I... you know, uh, non-negotiable, if I'm doing a job, need to be paid. Mm -hmm. Because that's work. That's just my work. That's what I've built towards. I'm there to do a certain job. Um, but the, I'd, I, I'd like to think that connections aren't transactional. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, whether I pay or whether I get pay, it's just a form of access, right? Um, it gives me access to the club, or someone can have access to come see me dance. Um, but essentially, you're all, I'm always there, um, be it on stage in front of a lot of people or in a club with very few people, because um, sometimes those are the best moments when there's like five people and you're all just wailing absolutely. out. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm always searching for connection and for, for a shared understanding and for that magical moment where you're both existing and you're mm -hmm. 
both aware that you're existing in the same space, but you're not focused on the fact that you're being aware, you know, like, um, that your heightened state is actually just moving through Mm -hmm. with other people. Um, you know, when, when, when being in a, in a, (laughs) being in a, in a room full of, you know, a mass amount of kids and, um, it's not unlike those moments maybe uh, as a DJ, I, I don't know because I don't play music for, for folks like that, but, um, but as a wolf, if I, or as a duck, for instance, like I do this movement where you <laughs> like shake off all the water and that just makes kids laugh so yeah, much. Oh yeah, that's hilarious. And <laughs> you know, it's really fun. The whole thing is like, mm-hmm. it's really fun. I love it so much. <laughs> But I get to be very, you know me, I'm so silly. Yeah. I'm really, really like, just very silly, You're very silly. ridiculous person. Yeah. <laughs> Much to Quende's dismay. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I, um, um, that's, you know, if, if I do that mm-hmm. and that makes someone laugh, then that mm-hmm. spurs me to do the next thing and it's a conversation. You're feeding and back and forth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I find it very hard to to create movement and build dance without other people around. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's, it's something that I need to do more of and, mm. and really, I mean, obviously I go into a studio by myself and I build movement for choreographies and things like that. But mm-hmm. I feel like it's very, sometimes I'm like, is this even really real? Mm. <laughs> Who's this for? Like, like if I'm just making, it, mm. <laughs> if you dance in your basement, <laughs> if you dance in your basement and you're not sharing it with someone, yeah, how powerful is it really? Interesting. How real is it really? But mm-hmm. you are also in a conversation with yourself. You know? And also the mechanics of it, like you're working out the mechanics of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, like Sarah I mean, and I, I mean train, like, you know, yeah. and we're like, okay, we're just going to drill. But then lately I've been finding, you know, I like actually having the, the social media kind of aspect of it and sharing the dance sessions, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's just like, it's kind of intimidating at first, but then when you start doing it, it's like, yeah, I'm like people need to see this and this yeah. is what the art is. You and know? I think it's too, it's like, when do you, when do you like really create something that's like very structured well and, thought out mm-hmm. and structured and, you know, how do you, th- how do you share that? Um... And then sharing something that you know necess- isn't necessarily what you would consider, you know, on the way to perfection. Um, but it's pure. Yeah, it's off and the it's cuff. F- yeah. It's and people respond to both of those things. In different ways, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so the difference between less people and more people, it doesn't really matter. I, I, I really do like having people around, though. Because mm-hmm. um, it informs what I'm doing. And, and every time you dance a dance, it's different. It's true. And I mean, I have a choreography that I do, but depending on who's in the room, that choreography is going to be different. Like if I'm the monster and the girl in the front row is screaming, crying, because <laughs> she's terrified you of me. You can tone that down a little like, bit, are you? <laughs> soften and just take it, like, go over this way a little bit, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> again, it's not gonna totally did my like, job. <laughs> 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 Seriously, my mind. <laughs> it's a mixture between like Grover and Animal, you know, <laughs> with a big, big mascot. It's fantastic. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I think I think you're moving energies, and if the more energy mm-hmm. there is, the more informs what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's health harder for me, I think, to self energize. Mm-hmm. in a studio alone um so uh, how however like in a studio with other people like why i love what i do is not so much about the performance as about building and creating and and you know making informed choices and weaving all that together to make something that you can share with people but really everyone that was in the process like has a really deep experience with mm-hmm. each other mm-hmm. as we know from working with each yeah, other yeah yeah um and then once you put it out there, for me, nothing is like a, a dance isn't finished until you've put it in front of an audience. Mm. Like that's the last part because, again, for me, if I've made a piece, that's my perspective. But in order for that piece to be whole, it needs all the different people in the room, all the people who are in the audience, their perspective makes it 
what it is. They might have thought of something that I didn't, you know, think about that they experienced through them and their their stories or their, you know, their life. And that informs the piece. Amazing. That makes the piece grow. That makes the piece more whole. Mm. And so it exists in more people's minds, experiences, and, and then it really, it really has life. Wow. Whereas whatever I have to say is just, you know, it's just one thing. Mm. <laughs> like, the, the feedback is really is really in the energy towards it and around it and or even the refusal of it you know that's 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 important too you have to mm. be able to listen to those things so yeah, i read somewhere it was a quote i forget which who said it but it was something about to the effect that as a dancer it's impossible to hide what you're thinking when you're dancing I've always thought of that, and it was, it's kind of a terrifying thing, really, if you think about it, <laughs> that your emotions would be, and your and your thought processes in the moment would be very apparent. But I must say that when I watch myself off, and I can see where that comes from, you know, where that quote, where that idea comes from. Yeah. And I think that's part of it, is you need to come to this sense of, like, like a mission that you're on, and then, in a way, you have to switch off and do it, you know? You have to switch off. Yeah. And you, like... You but do. you switch on also. I mean, it's like you're switching off and on at the same time where you're like, you're switching off certain parts of you and you're switching on another part where you really... Well, that's where dance is enlightening. Mm. Because if you're thinking about making your grocery list... Yeah. It's <laughs> not going to happen. It's going to be really hard to dance. <laughs> I mean, you uh, can. <laughs> you can make, you make it... Catch up. Yeah, if you're really you know, like, like a literal <laughs> but, piece about it. Um, yeah, no, I mean... I guess, I guess for me, the place that I'm at now, having had a lot of many different kinds of experiences with mm -hmm. dance and from different angles and styles and, and what have you, um, I think there's a lot of trust that I've built and a lot of compassion and a lot of love for myself. Um, that I, you know, when I'm dancing in a, like, in a, in a nightclub and this is, you know, often like one of the most joyous times of dancing because you're there to enjoy space with mm -hmm. other people. That's the purpose of it. Mm -hmm. right? um, I find I'm more looking to the faces of people and like, you know, trying to create, like connect and, and play off other people or play off what I've seen before and just continue that, but elevate it or, mm. you know, bring it to a different space. And um, it's play. And I think, I think play is, is, one of the most important things when it mm. comes to being creative you mm -hmm. have to let yourself have that freedom um and so i tr the, the the trust comes from i'm letting myself feel mm. i go with feelings i you know i'm a feeler that's why i call mm. my piece of feelers like i'm a feeler <laughs> i cry at everything um <laughs> but I can't be thinking about dancing and dance steps. I have to trust that those exist in me and uh, mm. they'll, be, they'll be called upon and they'll, they have their own energy and they'll come forward when they feel they need to speak. And That's you know, amazing. the ballet comes out at one point and then it's like, okay, the ballet's had its time. And then oh, no, now it's for some like deeply a contemporary and mm. you know, that, that, that I'm not even so much making those choices on myself, but with um, everything that's happened. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think in creating dance, when you want to create a choreography, you have to be sort of aware and careful of where your tendencies go to not like just repeat the same thing over and over all the time. Yes. But without that time for play, you won't even know what those things are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I love going out. <laughs> I love going out dancing. Me too, man. It's uh, fun. <laughs> it's one of the best <laughs> things ever. And yeah. honestly. I, I, I'm so grateful to uh, you all, you know, in and around a uh, hip-hop community in Ottawa because you're such open-hearted people. Yeah, there's a lot of good people. Holy moly. And, you yeah. know, I come from a different space and I come from a different tradition, a different, mm -hmm. you know, kind of culture with dance, but I've never felt excluded. Mm. Um, and I've, I've always felt like people, you know, like you learn from me, I learn from you, each one teach yeah. one. and. And we all are, are we all share, here to share energy together? Mm -hmm. You know, wanting to also, you know, still be respectful of, of space and, <sighs> yeah, and the space that, that, that I exist in and what I bring to the table. But, um, 
So you dance to a lot of different yeah. kinds of music. How much yeah. of the dance do you think comes from the rhythm? What's the relationship between dance and rhythm for you? Like, how do you navigate that? Because for me, I mean, I'm growing up as a percussionist and, and a mm -hmm. musician, dance is almost, you know, I mean, 10 years ago when I, 12 now, when I started dancing with Sarah, mm -hmm. I had this shift where it became more of a visual art form for me. But before that, it was mm -hmm. almost pure rhythm for me, dance. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I was doing moves, but they existed within this very dominating structure of rhythm in my mind. And now I would say the last 12 years, it's 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 become almost more of a 50 50 thing where there's the structure. Yes, but what's on top is just as important, you know. So does that how does that resonate with you? Like what, uh, what does that make you think of? If you're a dancer, you are also a part of the rhythm. Mm hmm. You know, you create rhythms off those rhythms. Yes. You create melodies off those melodies. So you are just an embodiment of an, a new part of the music. Mm. That if you added another instrument, that the dance is that. But it just happens to be visual. Mm. Um, it's an interesting thing to ask me because, you know, growing up, up until my contemporary dance uh, training, um, you know, ballet was the most consistent thing. And in ballet, you learn a lot, like I had a lot of musical education that came along with it. Um, and, you know, in ballet, everything is choreographed to the music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's certain, um, it's generally in a, you know, 4-8. <laughs> yeah. And maybe there's some 3-4s in there. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, you know, sort of common um, structure in which to dance. And that has its own rhythm and that has its own, own play. Um, but in contemporary dance, uh, a lot of the time we don't use music at all. Yeah. Um, and then so rhythm becomes a completely different other thing when and you're the dancing the sound coming off you is also part of the experience as a, wa as a watcher, as a, as a spectator to it, yeah. right? Yeah. And when you... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's funny that you're doing you know? that because you're also breathing really heavily. Yeah. And so a little, little secret. Um... When you're dancing with other people in contemporary dance, a grounding, connecting, the Zen phase, where you all are together, but how are they together? Because there's no music, breath. Hmm. <sighs> you know, it has its own. Yeah, I, there was a lot of that in your piece, actually. I remember. Um, and I didn't ask them to do of, that. Uh, it's very never it's beautiful added. rhythm, actually. I'd love to hear more. Of, like, I'd love to make music out of that, you know, like actual loud amplified versions of that you know because yeah they're beautiful sounds they're and when it, you know and, and, and a lot of it is like if the movements bring you over here it's going to make you Nat breathe naturally a exhale way. In yeah. A certain way, yeah, yeah yeah so you're not putting it on mm -hmm. but you may need the, your friends to hear it in order to be together and so yeah it's sort of necessary mm. <laughs> to have cool. um so so I find that if it just a f yeah, it's a, it's great and it's a fascinating question and I I I don't know you know I don't I don't know if I have the answer to no, it. No, it's cool. I think you're, um, you're delving I think into it. Part of what I'm really engaged with, like I'm taking intro to breaking. Okay. With C. Oh, do. Yeah, just because I, I you know I take it in visually a lot. Yeah. yeah. Be boring, be girling, but I don't. I'm always curious, like okay, but like which of those movements are like inherently yeah, how does it work? you know <laughs> part of this technique and part of the yeah. style and how are how is each person shaping that and yeah i feel like the more i'm learning from seed and you know the people that i watch and He's teaching you dance foundation with, yeah exactly and then you can see just how creative people are yeah, being it's amazing. oh my gosh the more you know the more you know the more you appreciate yeah. <laughs> like, no it's amazing I mean, yeah. is like just incredible it's wonderful yeah. um so just back to you know to to rhythms and 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 Quen and we we were referring to Quende, but really, also DJ Mimetic of yeah. Beautiful Time Code fame. Um, um, for him, culturally, like you can't separate the dance and the rhythm. Mm -hmm. And we went to um, Crazy Smooth's hustle class. Okay. And we had a really different experience because mm -hmm. it's a three three four rhythm three yeah. four rhythm on a four four on a song, four four beat. Yeah. You know four mm -hmm. four beat. Quende just had to step and like really try to integrate it's how that could happen. Tricky at first, yeah, yeah. You know, 
Mm-hmm. Whereas for me, I'm used to like not even having rhythm or just like, yeah. so for me, it's like, there's just this constant three, four that's happening yeah. in my legs. That's fine. You yeah. know? And then there's just this thing that's just happening over top. But I realize I can deconstruct rhythms yes. because yeah. of the abstract way that we work with rhythms in contemporary yeah. dance. And there's a lot of like, you know, you'll be on a five, eight at one point, and then you'll be on like a, on a nine and then you'll be on a six and it's a lot of the time it's choreographed in 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 not not the kind of westernized mm-hmm. four 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 eight three eight three four whatever um yeah. time signatures and i have adored adored growing in that and, mm. and and living with that and dancing with that um but you also you know to speak of rhythm you also have your own internal rhythm and your yes you know your own impulses and which is different every day also depending on how you feel and Again, coming yeah. back to the cycles. Mm-hmm. I really believe in cycles, and I really, really believe. In, I mean, maybe it's also because you know I'm a woman, and I track my, you know, my calendar, and I know when I'm really hormonal. Yeah. <laughs> and I know when I'm, you know, about to have my period, and I know, and so like that intimacy with just the the, the physicality and and how just a cycle of hormones can affect you. Mm. Um, you know, that's a very sort of basic thing, but then, you know, there are other aspects too and other cycles that we exist within. And um, yeah, that, I think that's part of what you need to tap into too. Um, I'm always curious to, to, to observe other dancers to see what other rhythms. Yeah. But it's funny because I have this rhythm talk with a lot of people and to me it's like, okay, well, rhythm is like one thing though. And then, like, what about melody? Because mm-hmm. to me, that's a equally strong. Like, I wouldn't say that rhythm is the thing. I would say there's rhythm, there's there's melody, there's there's space, there's silence, and maybe that's part of those things too. Mm-hmm. But um, that maybe for me, rhythm rhythm specifically isn't necessarily the driving force, but a part of a um, host of of things that are happening. So, like, when someone's playing music. I observe that I like to play with dancing on the rhythm, on the beat. Um, you know, dancing with the melody. Around, okay. Yeah, around, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then finding p- the spaces where there's no sounds yeah. and, and animating those spaces or animating those silences. Uh, and I love, like, the more we're talking about it, the more we're realizing that that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how can you make the what would seem more melodic movements those are just actually those are just other rhythms are just yeah exactly well, yeah. <laughs> but this is this too yeah. it's like it's not not rhythm but it's mm. i think i think when i hear rhythm i assume people are talking about beat yeah and like i mean th- this is a whole other you know it's a whole other philosophical discussion about what <laughs> melody is versus what rhythm i don't actually even believe that melody exists anymore they're just different types of rhythms and so it's like there are certain rhythms that have of pitched instruments yeah. or of pitched tones, yeah. but they're just rhythms also, right? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I mean all I of have, life. I, I totally agree, and I have much less um, study. Yeah, you're just of looking music. at it in a different way, yeah. And so yeah, I guess I guess I guess my literacy comes more from you know from dancing. You have staccato movements, mm-hmm. and you have smooth movements, and you have, you know. Um, yeah, tense and loaded movements and you yeah. <laughs> yeah, really light places and mm. you know all of those things interplay for me and that mm-hmm. uh, of course inherently they have their own cycles and their own yes. rhythms but um, yeah I was assuming you were talking about beat that's cool no that's <laughs> cool no, no, no. <laughs> it's all just a different uh, nomenclature for the same thing really I mean, nomenclature it's, exactly it's uh, you know semantics put it that way yes yeah. Yeah, it's but it's really, important to yeah. it's important to like really name those things and like what are we talking about and mm-hmm. you know what are we talking about when we talk about rhythm when we talking about cycles are we talking about beat are we talking about repetition are we talking you know tempo too tempo that's another thing right like how do you feel about dancing to hip hop versus dancing to house music and is there one mm. that resonates more with you like what do you relate to more are they the same fast song slow song drum and bass how do you feel about dancing to drum and bass <sighs> I mean drum and bass is very holds a very special place in my heart. Me too. I love it so much. A lot of so, people actually really love drum and bass. You know, you don't hear it a lot. You hardly ever hear it. Foundational. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, um, it's amazing music. So good. Yeah. So good. I wish. Yeah, I, I would want to hear that more. Me Any too. DJs out there, you want to play all that? <laughs> I'm gonna be there. Um, tomorrow. Tomorrow comes. Hey! <laughs> morning jam. <laughs> Did you see that ad for the? Uh? I'm playing a morning jam on the beach tomorrow with uh, with Jay Fun and uh, Ollie. So of, fun. Yeah. 
And they I and all these big drum and bass heads, so I'm sure there'll be some drum and bass involved. I'm, uh, <laughs> damn, I wish I could, but I also am very happy with where I'm going to be, which is in yes. rehearsal with the peptides. Okay, cool. <laughs> so I'm are you guys shooting uh, for a show, or are music you preparing video. something, or a music video? Cool. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna launch it in September, awesome. September, October. So awesome. Yeah. And that's a great it. and you made a music video for uh, Tara's piece that I worked on with her. Yeah. And that was really what interesting. What a joyous as well. time that was. That was oh a lot my of fun. gosh. <laughs> yeah, I mean I didn't I didn't really know you that well that's right. then either. Yeah. And uh I really you just told me to give her. Oh, you did. And like <laughs> You hella gave her. <laughs> well, I think it it's crazy. true that it was such a positive environment. <laughs> yeah. And the song was playing and I was on that on that kind of rhythm that day yeah and the girls in the background you know they were one awesome. of them i didn't know so well but had a wonderful energy about her yeah. and the other two like edith and tara like those yeah. are, <laughs> dearie, i love dearie. those ladies so <laughs> i just felt really supported and really yeah. um appreciated and that, that was a makes you want to give you know, back you know yeah. and so yeah some it was beautiful wonderful. footage i mean that's amazing stuff so I'll, yeah. I'll cut some of it in the intro i here, mean you so. were like here yeah, was, i'm watching it <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so you asked me, you know, what do I prefer dancing to? Any, uh, give me anything. Because yeah. if I, especially if I don't resonate on it, because uh -huh. I want to figure out why. Okay. You know, what about this doesn't resonate with me? How can I find my way through this? Do you collect music yourself? Yeah. MP3s, or do you have a CD collection, or how do you do it? Both. Yeah, usually MP3s, but, uh, uh, I, yeah. Do you stream music as well? Or? Yeah. Yeah. The stuff you stream, do you, uh, if you f hear something really amazing, do you try to go out of your way to get it, or do you... Yeah, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you yeah. gotta own it type thing? You, you I, like if, to own if it? If it really, if I really feel it needs to be a part of me, I'd rather, yeah. I'd rather... Have it so you can have it offline type yeah. thing. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I'm a, I've, I've always... And I say always, that's hmm, it's a big word. Since about <laughs> the age of 16, <laughs> maybe 15, 14, my brother, my brother um, was really into hip hop. Okay. And he's older than me. And so I was very lucky in that, like, I got introduced to hip hop and, you know, and drum and bass and, and electronic styles of music. Probably around like 13, yeah. 14. Um, and I really appreciate that from my brother because I don't think without him um, it would have been a part of my world mm. um, and so yeah, I just ended up having a voracious appetite for electronic music and for awesome. hip-hop and I just gather and gather and gather and nice. you know you, there's there's the songs that you dance to at <laughs> home and you're just so excited but a lot of it is just accompanying me as I do things and yeah. anyone who's been in creation with me like I will I will put on a lot of different styles of music cool. as we're creating so that different parts of ourselves can be pulled out so mm. it's not just one one thing um uh i've really been enjoying exploring very lightly but hopefully more a house with you though cool like i really i feel like that is a an interesting intersection it's amazing. from my world into, you know, what I, what I like to listen to and, awesome. you know, um, turning into a house head. I am <laughs> fine with that. <laughs> house tends to be something that appeals to people older, you know, when they get older. It's funny mm -hmm. how you kind of grow into it in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I never listened to house until I was old enough to go out to clubs and then. Mm. When I started going out, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then it just got deeper and deeper yeah. to the point where now I'm obsessed with it. You know? I will say, I love, love, love heavy, heavy beats, heavy yeah. drums, heavy rhythm. Yeah, for sure. Um, that just, that soothes the soul. Yeah, totally. Um, and maybe that, you know, rewinding back to um, just even what I started listening to, like, I don't know. Yeah. It grows and changes though, right? Like it, it does change and evolve as you get older and mm -hmm. you know, and then the I have to say a lot of my consumption of music is grâce à yeah, of course. Monsieur Quende. Mm -hmm. Um and like, you know, the reason that we're even talking is because I took in one of his performances and the next time he came across my path I was like, Thank you 
so much for you music it was my dad's birthday and it just resonated so much nothing you know like mm, you really you know obviously it's gorgeous but like <laughs> <laughs> it was really like wow you know like yeah. that was the i just i so dig on the right music for the right time and then yeah. you know it, oh my gosh that has such power yeah, yeah um and the fact that he plays and creates the exact same music that i adore mm -hmm. is is just a gift in life yeah you guys have that then in i can common. ask him and you know i can be aware of more mm -hmm. like one of my favorite artists flacco i would have never have known i think about him had it not been for that partnership so Amazing. just the people around you and what they, yeah, they show you, you as well yeah it's also the dance i mean the, the something i think you, you had watched the interview I did with the Knox, and we yeah. talked about that as well how like often you'll be dancing and these things will come out of you where it's like you just feel like that presence or the energy of the person who taught you that move you know mm. it's amazing it's like the all mm -hmm. these people are there with you and like it's like a martial arts teacher almost that's with you in the ring you know or like you know this guide that you have your parents that are in with your you know your upbringing it's amazing right yeah absolutely. it's this culture that's given to us and then it grows through us we spread it as well but it's this very profound experience that you have that's tied to that person who taught you you know so. which makes me think that contrary maybe to i don't know i think dance just keeps getting richer it does no because doubt. there are more layers and there are more intersections and there's more sharing and there's more elevation and there's you know, it just keeps growing and percolating and right. growing and percolating. And, and mm. you know, it's funny that you bring that up because I've been thinking this year, um, I guess I've just been thinking about who I am, what I'm carrying with me. And um, my grandmother on my dad's side is uh, Ukrainian. Mm. And this year I'm going to be taking some Ukrainian dance classes mm -hmm. just to... Yeah, man. Like I'm, uh, like yeah. the, you know, I think it's important to look at yourself and see, like, word, what's back there, Yo, for and sure. whoom, just yeah. bring it, bring it forward, and and encompass mm. that, and really bring your ancestors forward, and honor your, word. honor your family, honor who came before, and absolutely, also to know what your space means and mm -hmm. what it means when you do take space, you know, in a in a dance environment, or even you know, even not, but mm. you know, for me, my line, my I would say my main language is is dance. Movement, yeah. You know, I speak nonverbal and English and French. <laughs> <laughs> I speak <it> nonverbal. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that because I think that's Ooh. just going to add a super, super deep level to all this. That's amazing. And, like, that's another thing I love about house is it comes from a lot of these traditional forms like, you know, capoeira mm. and then on the, the Afro-Latin side and, and all the different cultural dances from Haitian cultural dances to, mm -hmm. you know, West African cultural dances. Yeah. A lot of them have really informed house and it's this sort of a melting pot, you know, that I, that I really love as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's amazing. And those, and those like, the, all those styles of dancing aren't inherent to my culture. Mm -hmm. And so I learn more about the world and have access into, oh, you know, this is this type of dance from this place. And, yeah. you know, what's what's it like for those people? Why did they dance? And it mm -hmm. gives you, you know, an impetus maybe to, culture, to, to learn about culture and yeah. to understand, okay, well, you know, this is that. And then so what are... What is the ways that I'm dancing? And it's amazing. Where does that come from? And how was that built? And what am you know? Mm -hmm. How are we sharing the space? And I mm -hmm. think I think you can't be a dancer and not. What well, I mean you can, but I think it's important as a dancer to really be connected to your culture and your heritage. Yeah. And, and to bring others, that awareness and others heritage and, then, and, and cultures, then, you know, so that you know what you're bringing to yeah. the table, mm -hmm. and it gives you. A platform from which to understand or start to understand or relate and share yeah. and work off you know each other's yeah, um, it's amazing. and not just you know also like I have to say uh, you know I'm a contemporary dancer and I'm a and I'm a ballet dancer and I've, I've done lots of different styles of dance like I wouldn't feel uncomfortable tapping yeah for instance I grew up tapping mm -hmm. like it lives inside me it may come out one day yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. um, but I'm not about to go in there and do a movement that I've seen from someone without knowing really where it comes oh, from. Hence me yeah. like wanting to know more about b-girling. Yeah, you can't fake I'm the I'm not going to turn into a b-girl, but... You can't fake the I've funk. been watching it and I've been, you know, <laughs> oh my gosh, what is, this is so beautiful and I've been loving this and yeah. loving taking it in visually, but to really, you know, respect it and know it, you got to learn from the people. you got to put really your time in and you got to learn it. It's got to become part of you. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, it's amazing. But at the same time, like I, what I love about it is the, you know, 
to me it's the promise of you know unity in the in the world of culture where we can really look at all these different cultures and take some of the best elements of all these different cultures and you know unabashedly love them and grow to, to for them to be part of you you know yeah. I mean it's amazing like it's that's the promise of what the world could be you know from culinary arts to dance to everything you know I mean it, it's just yoga you know mm -hmm. I mean it's like to me that's you know as yeah. much as we have to be aware of cultural appropriation and in, in, in the context of colonialism um, I think Absolutely. it's a double-edged sword like we don't want to rob ourselves of the beauty of all these different cultures just because we're afraid of being cultural appropriating you know I mean it's it's a no, you just have to respect where it's coming yeah. from and seek the source put the and time in and learn move forward yeah. in a respectful way mm -hmm. learn the knowledge you mm -hmm. know, talk to people um, yeah because that's the promise of humanity to me, man. Yeah. It's like there's so yeah. many beautiful, intricate little pockets of art and life that are around the world. And if we could just open up all our hearts at the same time to all this stuff and learn, imagine yeah. what the world would be like, you know? Listen. And listen. we got to listen. Yeah. we got to listen to each other, mm -hmm. you know, in order to truly, like, find that, that really deep and positive space, we need to listen to each other. And not be afraid of people who are different too, you know, and like opening your, yourself up to people because we tend to birds of a feather you know, <sighs> flock together and everybody tends like, to have their. Oh, bring it on! Yeah. Like what you know, for me that's breath. As a of dancer, fresh especially, air. you're just like, wow, yeah, I want to learn yeah, that. More, more, more. Like, give me more. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's really you know, you're touching on the power of the arts a lot too, and the power of healing or the healing of the arts or arts and healing, and yeah. you know that that. I, what really enraged me when <laughs> Stephen Harper was in, in power mm -hmm. and he, you know, really, there was a, a very, very scarce and very scary time for mm -hmm. the arts in Canada it was. when he was in, in power. It was brutal. Um, and how he refused art, you know, in a certain way. And I just, I, I mm -hmm. wish I had a conversation with him face to face. Like, oh, Stephen Harper, so my dear, like, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> do you watch movies? Mm. Do oh, he watches Netflix. Your, yeah, do you listen to your music? Do yeah. you go dance at weddings? Yeah. Then how can you say yeah. that the arts aren't important? Oh, You're crazy. not allowed to listen to music ever again. <laughs> You're not allowed to listen, watch any films ever again. You're not allowed to go watch any dance performances. Your children aren't allowed to dance. You're like, if you yeah. took all, stripped them away from all the arts, miserable. Yeah. I'm sure. Miserable life. You know, and we really have to see how much the arts are infused in our everyday and are part of the joy and the solace of living yeah, man. and they you know yeah, human culture the ways for us to connect with each other and mm. the power of nonverbal communication mm -hmm. because we get a lot of you know sometimes we don't understand each other through words sometimes Word. words can be very necessary like in terms of consent mm -hmm. for instance you know someone mm -hmm. says you want to do something and you say no you know, that's very necessary words. They might not pick up on your nonverbal cues. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think there's space for both, but uh, there's more language in the, in the nonverbal that people speak than they're aware of mm. um, and could pull more from, I think. Mm. And also, we need to be careful with our words and very clear. Yeah when we are speaking hmm. so what do you think the um, the new media landscape has done to dance like YouTube I mean you started dancing way before YouTube yeah so what, what do you think the effect of all that is on on as a dancer but also as an audience for dance as a as a fan of dance for example mm. like what do you think that is yeah um You know, given that dancing exists in the dancer, it kind of goes back to this tangibility thing that we're talking about. How, you know, if I like a visual artist, how it's Sao, who comes from Ottawa, I can participate in his art, I can put it on my wall, and I can own it for as long as I want to own it, so long as no one touches it, right? Mm. And it exists there, and it's tangible, and it's real, and I can point to it. Mm. Um, but how do you own dance? Mm. Do you have a video of it that you play for people in your home? Probably not. Do you invite a dancer over to just like dance in one corner of your room forevermore next to this? No, like, mm. <laughs> so access, 
is what I would say is, you know, has really happened. It's given people quick access to dance. Mm. Um, and I would say even, you know, the So You Think You Can Dance, where, you yeah. know, for me, that's on the commercial side of, uh, of dancing, and I'm more on the, you know, theater-based side of dancing. Um, what a joy and a revelation and oh, finally feeling I got that even though it wasn't exactly what I did, that dance is now existing in people's People can homes. understand it a bit more. Yeah. It's, it's you know, it's people knew people's it. dancers' names. Mm, that's crazy, eh? Yeah. Whoa. You know? That's people wonderful, like yeah. so, so get into knowing singers and like, mm -hmm. ah, celebrities. Yeah. How many dancers do we do this with? Yeah. How many dancers do we know off by heart? Yeah, you know, it's crazy. People say Gene Kelly or like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like stare. cool, yeah. but but there's a but few more. <laughs> whoa! <laughs> <laughs> and so I think you know, I think I really appreciate just how much people are sharing, and I just I hope that they're very clear with like, say underneath like this is movement made by me, and mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, own your stuff and and really get. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other thing is like even as a fan yeah. of dance is like the literacy around um you know respecting the creativity and the work that goes into it you know yeah i mean i would i think yeah. that poets are probably maybe even a little worse off than dancers are but dancers are pretty far down the list mm. in terms of how appreciated they are you know and it's a it's contemporary a very dance is the least funded art form in canada jesus about the house. <laughs> 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 poetry uh, yeah, poetry's not oh a God. very lucrative field either. <laughs> but I mean with yeah, like it's yeah. it's just really um uh, fringe, I guess, you know? Yeah. Is what it is. You have to accept that. Yeah. If you're gonna be going into either of those things. Yeah, and you've embraced that part even for yourself as a as a person, you know, looking at this as a career you know, yeah. like you've embraced that and the, the how transitory it is and how, you know, you got to go from one gig to the next and it's yeah. there's not a lot of consistency. You have but I some think it's gigs, also, so. it's also, you know, um, I'm me recognizing where I am, when I am, and what does that mean? So I came back to Ottawa after having grown up here and then was in Montreal for six years. Um, I came back and... Uh, as was mentioned to me after I made my first year in independent dance, that this was the first person to make a full-time career in contemporary dance mm. independently. Mm. So I'm contracted through Propeller Dance, um, Tardus Dance, you know, Dorsal Dance. I worked for Théâtre des Rives Urbaines and Platypus Theater and, you know, different gigs that keep me a full-time mm -hmm. job. Um, if I'm the only person <laughs> doing that, then it's also, re you know, recognizing like, okay, I have all the jobs and I'm moving forward, but how can I create more mm -hmm. for the next generation, for the people around me? And so this is even why I've gone and, and really tried to, you know, um, make connections with other people in the city who are doing other things, folks in the theater community, folks in the music community, folks in other different styles of dance, you know, in, in you all in the hip hop community, but also swing dancers and uh, just to be, you know, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> like contemporary dance that exists in the city and there's and a lot of division in the I dance do a world lot of work too. in trying to in in, in awareness building. Mm. And I I just took that on for myself because all the people who are running all the organizations in Ottawa in contemporary dance are maxed. They're doing. They're putting their whole heart, their whole selves, into that, and or raising kids. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so they're full time. They're full on. They're doing all that work. And so, if I don't have kids, and I, you know, I'm here doing this, then it's sort of. I think it's a beautiful obligation mm -hmm. to spread the word, and to put myself in positions where I'm. You know, I am talking about what we do, and I am talking about my community, and um, um, and I'm happy to do it. But it's turned into now like. You know, I'm super happy. I sit on the the um, com youth and culture committee for the city of Ottawa, mm -hmm. um, which created, and we cur um, we also uh, sit on the jury for a micro grant of a thousand dollars three times a year That's for cool. um, you know youth or emerging artists um, or people working in culture, like in in history or awesome. historical stuff. So, um, yeah. It also, like, 
being in the position I am in, it also means I'm my own artist manager. Mm -hmm. So I really do a lot of jobs. Yeah, you're working it hard, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a lot of self-management. I would say anyone who's going into dance, you, you like go you take any self-management courses you can. Mm -hmm you know, really know how to do it, how to do it proper. Yeah. So that uh, you can, yeah, keep getting the next things. Um, One thing but you gotta create your own work. You know, this mm -hmm. thing with the peptides, like yeah. I created a relationship with them. We kept talking. We kept talking about the possibility of doing something mm -hmm. until the situation until was happens, right, yeah. you know? But you've, you've, like I said before, you've always got to keep it moving. You'll be a self-starter, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing we haven't even touched on, which is a huge part of you when I think about you as a dancer as well as as a person, is your work with uh, propeller dance as well. Mm -hmm. So do you want to talk about that a bit? Always. I always want to talk about propeller <laughs> dance. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, propeller dance I, I did an audition for when I moved back here. Okay. in 2011, December of 2011, and got hired in January of 2012. Okay. Um, and Propeller is a dance organization in Ottawa that um, has a, prof a professional performing company that I dance for mm -hmm. um, that's nine, nine members strong. Um, and it's a motley crew of folks who are able-bodied able-bodied, <laughs> whatever that means. Relatively able-bodied. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, folks who, who, who have different uh, types of physical disabilities or cognitive disabilities, and um, including, you know, uh, manual or, or, or power wheelchairs, um, including, you know, uh, my friend Bella um, is autistic and just a lot of different expressions of all the different beautiful ways that human beings can be mm. uh, formed and expressed and live in the world. Um, there's also um, um, community classes that we put on for different age groups. I taught the youth class uh, for two years and I wish I could still teach it because it was amazing, you know, connecting with youth from all different expressions mm. um, of ability and finding an equal space and it, it which oh my gosh created so much power and s yeah i really 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 miss those classes um and we go into in an outreach programming go into schools um just to 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 create the awareness of disability and, and the awareness of you know the capacities within Mm -hmm. You know, just if you live with disabilities, doesn't mean you can't dance. If you, the lo the 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 motto, I almost said logo. The motto is if you can breathe, you can dance. That's amazing. You know, um, and you're right. This is a huge part of me right now. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as I started working with them, so it really fulfills a part of me that's actually been with me since I was young. My dad, when he was seven, 18, whatever, when he was young, <laughs> went and worked at um, one of the first um, Lache um, Oh, are you serious to Jean Vanier's uh, yeah, project? Yeah, so he went to Jean Vanier. Wow. Um, so I grew up um, in England, when I was growing up in England, and we'd go down to France and we'd Amazing. stay uh, in, um, in the Lache community. Did you Pierre ever meet Jean Vanier? Mm. No, yeah. he's like chills in his home these okay. days. Yeah, but um, amazing individual though. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Like I've been in front of his house while he was in there, and yeah. my uncle was like, "So he's in there, but he like doesn't want to go in." But yeah, as a community, I go back to a lot, um, a lot, even as an adult. Uh, his know. ideals and his uh, his way of thinking. Yeah. It? yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It's it's really it's totally necessary. He was a totally necessary person and very wow. um, respectful and, and, and forward thinking, especially in the times, because he started to take um, folks with disability out of institutions. Mm -hmm. And you know, the whole concept that like, if you have a different expression of ability as a person, it doesn't mean you should be locked away. Yeah. It means we all need to understand what that means in our society and make mm -hmm. the shifts in order to include that person. Wow. Um, so, having grown up, you know, 
being around a lot of a lot of different kinds of people who live with a lot of different kinds of abilities it's just natural for me it's just you know part of the world um and so to find a dance company that does exactly that it, yeah. is like just a, a natural continuation of that Amazing. um so that's been a blessing in my life and it's really i've never not i've never but um when i started dancing with them i realized that that this was the next learning well, this is the next thing I need to be doing. You can't not be fully yourself. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's it, it it's really deepened my concepts of authenticity and being here and being in the moment and connecting with people. Well, because if you're in space with someone who really observes the world in a very different kind of way than you, and where do the where are the intersections? Hmm. You know, how do you find a connection? How do you find that the very thing that you know you know i was saying earlier that i seek out like well, yeah. if someone's you know has autism you you know we still get along we're buddies like mm -hmm. bella's one of my best buddies but she exists and experiences the world very differently mm. and so like one of the most profound moments i had in creation was um just listening to bella because she really creates a lot of storyboards for herself and imagery okay and as we were building a duet, she was sort of saying, you know, all oh, the lime green leaves and the lime green leaves and, you know, we're under the tree. And so just uh, permitting myself to just, in my imagination, I'm this fairy, I'm in a tree, there are lime green leaves overhead, go with it. You know, and oh, the next thing, and this is <laughs> actually sometimes why I wear sparkly nail polish, is to remind myself of this duet. Hmm. Um, and that, you know, as soon as we stepped out of the tree, she said, you you know, fairy, fairy dust everywhere. And, you know, and she just, it's a lot of images and it's a lot, you know, and sparkle and this. Hmm. And not sort of stepping outside of how am I moving and what are the steps. I'm more letting Bella's way of seeing the world guide what the next movements were. Vivid imagination and like... <sighs> she is mm. sh so sharp. Hmm. Like she has such a such a high intelligence for energies and and really reading what's there. Well, I one, yeah, one of the most profound profound people to dance with. Um, but also dancing with my friend Moni, who um, moves at a very 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 different pace than I do. Hmm. Um, she, you know, <laughs> I think this is slow, you know, and for her, it's like that might be actually fast. And so if that's fast for her, what does slow mean? So it may it blows my mind of like different timings like Whoa. You know, this is That's slow. This is slow. Yeah. But I had never it had I not been placed in a room full of people who all exist uh you know, in the world with a disability, and I'm the only person with <laughs> you know, uh yeah. with an able bodied experience then mm -hmm oh my gosh, it opens up so much more. Like I, I would have never have learned this whole area of myself and this whole way of moving had I not started with propeller. Well. Um, it's, it's completely changed the way I dance and it's really brought me into the moment and awareness and um, especially dancing with other people and, and you know, both like keeping aware of each other and sort of checking in um, energetically and I don't know mm. how to explain that but just a heightened you know that heightened awareness space and not just doing the dance for you but doing the dances you know supporting each other um, but it's also what I really believe is 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 where especially contemporary dance the, with the next level is mm. the next level to me is more openness more inclusion and more and I mean inclusion in terms of race. I mean inclusion in terms of if you, you know, even religion, of ability, of yeah. what have you. Um, like different expressions of being yeah. and humanity. Um, but I, I, it's one of the biggest gifts, dance gifts ever yeah. to, to, to dance with propeller. And, you know, sort of what's building me into my next spaces is I'm realizing that... Uh, the type of dance that I do, as beautiful as it is and as wonderful as I find the community, it's um, it's kind of exclusive, mm -hmm. you know? And it's really, uh, it's been bothering me for a while that there's 
virtually no professional dance training for folks with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And so if there's no access, then you don't get into the professional world. Mm -hmm. And then the so professional world is a lot of able-bodied people doing a lot of able-bodied mm -hmm. things. Nothing wrong there, but mm -hmm. it's not reflective of the world. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So I really want to keep creating dance that includes the world and doesn't just you know have one perspective but actually includes all perspectives That's amazing. so i really want to address that <laughs> like figure out how yeah. to get that training be it you know in the existing dance schools in the company creating a wing um, of supported professional dance training or you know be it one company and going doing what i have no idea yet but that's something i need to figure out cool yeah um but it's also, you know, it's been propeller alongside this phase of Taraluz Dance. And Taraluz Dance is a, you know, for women, by women um, dance, dance company and really supporting and, you know, uh, decidedly Franco-Ontarian, um, which isn't, you know, very, very much seen. And we've gone up north on different tours um, into the Franco-Ontarian communities that cool. exist further up north in um, Ontario, just to provide for those for those youth up there, just, hey, it's possible, it exists. <laughs> yeah. You can That's dance awesome. for a living, like, and yeah. you're Franco-Ontarian, be proud of that. Mm -hmm. Bring that to the table. We need you at the table. Amazing. Um, so engaging engaging different communities just just makes you know my dance form stronger mm. um and then mm. i really i guess i guess maybe maybe it's the age i am or maybe it's the place i'm getting to but i really wanna yeah if i've received this much from it that i need to be i'm in a position where i can open doors word so uh, i gotta open those doors that's beautiful be a part of other people opening those doors or mm -hmm. you know i think of my buddy luca um lazy legs yeah lazy yeah who you know we've met at many different um disability arts festivals like tangled arts fest and and troy sexton was there oh, i don't know if you know percussionist mm -hmm. and amazing beautiful guy yeah check him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah you'll you'll really like him <laughs> Um, but yeah, just, just talking with Luca about, um, about, you know, bringing those things into the picture and how actually, you know, you share those videos on, on Facebook or whatever, people love it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, if we're not used to seeing it, then there needs to be more creative. Yeah. 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 So, Word. um, so what does the future hold for you then the next few months, the next years? You're never going to stop dancing. Can't. No. Can't stop. Won't stop. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't have it in my plans to stop being an interpret, to being a dancer. Um, I think it's a beautiful relationship to be the vehicle of a choreographer's vision. Yeah. You know, um, and to inform their thoughts and to embody their, their, their voice is, is such a great gift in life. I think it's I think it's activism to just dance as you get older, you know, because it's like this this whole yes. I mean, inactivity. Check out older and, and reckless oh yeah. dance series in Toronto. Cool, fantastic, yeah, and it's all like you know over forty five. Be beautiful. So That's what we need, you know, we because do. it's there's it's a lot so of ageism. much ageism in it. Yeah, yeah there really is. And what's like. Can it be known that what's beautiful at dancing isn't necessarily the tricks? No, it's no. Not, you know, yeah. like the tricks amplify moments, but it's mm. just the moments in the whole, the mm. whole dance of it. Um, it's a Martha Graham quote, I think. Eh? The the what makes the the dancer beautiful is the love that they have for the dance, not the technique. You know, it's, uh, it's so true. The man. technique is just the. It's just you know. It's it's the. Um, Kind of a vehicle. It's the framework. Yeah, the framework. It's just exactly. the framework, but then you got to build the house. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, it's yeah. a little house quote for you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was saying. I was on sort of a... Sorry, I cut you That's off. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. I just no, have a goldfish memory. No, we're talking about ageism and, uh, and... Right, stopping and dancing. Never. Yeah. Yeah, I hope to never stop dancing. But I hope to create more space where I'm creating. Mm-hmm. Um, I really do enjoy choreographing pieces and I think the more I choreograph, the more I understand what my voice is and what I can bring to the world. Mm -hmm. um, and I need more training in that. 
so in my next like little while is 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 upping my choreographic abilities and mm. and delving into more of the craft based things um mm. within within contemporary dance being informed with all these other dances that I've learned um I also need to go and spend some time um studying and navigating different places in the world where disability arts are well funded and are thriving mm. and are um you know um uh, integrated happily integrated into the you know regular everyday mm. um sort of dance scene and how do we bring that here and how do we replicate that and how do we um mm. support that um so you know, I'm one of those people that really believes in doing goals and like looking, you know, forward and then like, you know, okay, then five years and then three years and two more, whatever. Um, but I'm at a place where I really, because I've <laughs> like done all my dance goals, I'm like, what do I do next? I just got to <laughs> go with gut feelings now because I really don't know where this is all swimming. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of a beautiful place to be because I feel like I'm 19 again and I'm just embarking on the next sort of thing for myself. Um, all the while, like, you know, like I have this music video with the peptides. Yeah. Um, this thing is coming out. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm going to be starting with Propeller Dance uh, again in the fall. I'm working uh, with director Jessica Ruano on um, the Gomeshi Effect, okay, yeah. which comes out in January 2017. That's going to be cool. Stone. It's going to be really profound. We've, we're having already very profound experiences. Cool. We've had a workshop weekend, all the actors together, and a couple of in, invited actors too, um, just so that they get some literacy on my style of dance. So it's verbatim dance theater, cool. that is, which is verbatim means that all the words in the play are from real life interviews. Cool. And so we've interviewed people who are survivors of sexual assault and people who don't believe that rape culture exists, for instance, um, getting folks from um, the judicial system like judges and lawyers, making sure that we have all voices at the table in terms of disability, in terms of race, in terms of different perspectives, well. so that the com you know what we comprise as a text is really reflective of this area. Mm. And the Gomeshi effect is a term that came out, obviously, from the Jean Gomeshi trial, but as a phenomenon, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a term to describe the phenomena of story sharing um, that survivors started to do because of that mm. trial. And the hashtags been raped, never reported, mm. or um, I believe her. Um, and so for us, it's really just a way of continuing those conversations. It's not about Gomeshi, it's about, um, you know, what platforms do we use to communicate, you know, the really hard things and especially surrounding sexual violence. Like, how do we address those things? How do we not forget that this is still prevalent mm. um, just because the trial is done, you know? Um, and our way is really making a piece about it. Yeah, making art about it. So if you've ever looked at um, DV8, literally D and a V and an 8, theater, Go look at the videos <laughs> on the online space. Okay. Okay. <laughs> DV8. Physical theater is one of my favorite dance okay. companies and they're based out of the UK and they do verbatim dance theater cool. and they've touched on like xenophobia, homophobia and really like go in on um, unnecessary topics to be cool, talking man. about. So that's that. Obviously there's that um, uh, show in Macau that's going to be amazing. Amazing. It's going to go help me spend Christmas with my family in London which will be really great nice. and go visit all my English family. Um... Yeah, and just keep on keeping on. I'm I'm hoping to create a solo um, that will come from different um, choreographic tasks given to me from three mentors of mine, Lana Morton, Sylvie Desrosiers, and Yvonne Coutts, who all are um, very wise. Uh, wise women um, in contemporary dance in this city and who run um, the Ottawa Dance Directive. Sylvia runs the the contemporary training program at the at the School of Dance. Um, so mentors of mine for sure and I need as I said I'm going more into learning and elevating my choreographic abilities mm -hmm. and so you gotta start at home. 
yeah. you know, <laughs> no, you and with the people who really, really know me, um, mm -hmm. but also are, you know, incredible artists in their own right. I'm hoping to then go and take, do you know Debbie Young? To be young, no. To be young. Oh, to be young. No, no. Um, another person you should check out, Anita Africa. Okay. Um, and um, she's based out of uh, Toronto. She mm -hmm. runs Wata Theatre. Okay. Don't know. Um, and curates or curates. She, um, her mom started the Surplusy method. Okay. And she has these residencies to go and learn the surplusy method, but also, and so the surplusy method, I'm, I'm not going to be able to remember all the things that it is or what it stands for, mm -hmm. but it's basically self-actualization, um, learning anti-oppressive uh, ways of creating art, mm -hmm. um, self-realization and leadership capacities. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of different things in, in one, but I feel like with the things that I want to create and how I want to move forward, mm -hmm. I need that. Uh, perspective um so it's just you got a lot on the go amelia always so much it's all yeah. like i sometimes i don't i gotta stop and just be like whoa yeah it's amazing i like this is such a an amazing blessing mm. <laughs> you know but blessings come from you got to plant the seed and you got to yes. water it and you've got to make sure the soil is ripe and you've got to take care and you've got to grow mm -hmm. and then you get the bounty yeah. you know and i feel like i'm 10 years into a career and it's like okay now I, you know I, I put all the work in yeah um and so you know anyone who's dancing or anyone who has dance dreams like yeah those dreams seem really far away but just keep it moving yeah keep a steady pace you know you will mm. fall you will get injured you will you know you will go and work at Lululemon for four years and become a bike messenger but you'll still dance and you know and there's mm. it's never too late it's never too late to start dancing it's never too late to continue dancing it's Word. never too late to make big dreams for dance it's never mm. too late to also take a step with dance and really you know um take a step back from performing or take a step back from, from going outside with dance and take some totally time in yourself. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's a really hard thing for me, but it's uh, totally necessary to keep revisiting what dance is for you and, and um, why it exists in your life. Word, good advice. Yeah, keep Amazing. it moving. Amazing. I know that's like uh, Kim's <laughs> Pino's little uh, company but I really okay. it's uh, yeah y y y life is movement it is it really is well, this was a great interview I really enjoyed it I enjoyed uh, getting deep into your methodology and all this I mean I see you as a as a club dancer mostly really and I, I mean know. some some of the stage work and that we've done and all that <laughs> but so uh, but it's great to hear your take on it I think you're an amazing artist and you've got a, you. you know a lot to contribute and I hope you know I can't wait to see what you're gonna come up with in the next few years maybe we'll do another Thanks, one of these guys. in five years and hey man we'll be able to go back and talk about the next five years <laughs> I mean I really appreciate I don't I don't I really, I really love talking dance with people, but it's rare that people want to sit down yeah, it's and talk about happens. something that's nonverbal. Uh, I love listening. And to I find love spacing. Or, yeah, exactly. I so, love hearing And about I don't it, know yeah. what I've said. I've probably said a whole bunch of shant. No, you said <laughs> a lot of great <laughs> stuff, man. You, you planted a lot of great seeds with it, so mm, it's, it's great. It's good. I'm going to enjoy editing this, and I'm sure I'll learn a lot from it, just yeah. like analyzing and replaying it and listening to it, so... Well, I'm really uh, humbled and really appreciative that you would want to listen to what I have to say. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Much love. <laughs>